If you, O Lord, shield, sorry, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us prepare for this celebration of the Mass by first calling to mind our sins. Thank you for this Mass is for Thomas Costello. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God the Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples, and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God, in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I know how to be poor, and I know how to be rich too. I have been through my initiation, and now I am ready for anything, anywhere, full of stomach or empty stomach, poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master without the help of the one who gives me strength. All the same, it was good of you to share with me in my hardships. In return, my God will fulfill all your needs in Christ Jesus as lavishly as only God can. Glory to God our Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have a, my banquet all prepared. My oxen are fattened, cattle have been slaughtered, everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready. But as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads, to the town, and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out on the roads and collected together everyone they could find bad and good alike. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. Then the king came in to look at his guests. He noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment. And he said to him, How is it you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? And the man was silent. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the dark where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's scripture readings about, are about allegory and symbolism. Allegory and symbolism. In Isaiah, the mountain that people are invited to come and share all the joys and everything on it is an allegory of the kingdom of God. Isaiah lived hundreds of years before Christ and the people were called by the prophet to come and share with him into the wonderful kingdom of God. But they decided not to, the people that is. We have in the Gospel an allegory about the wedding feast. The wedding feast stands for all the good things that God has promised those who will follow him, who will listen to his call and enter into his kingdom with him. 
But as with the prophet, the people decided not to listen. And they went their own way, not listening to the invitation of the good God, of the good kingdom that was in store for those who were prepared to make sacrifice in this life in order to enter into the kingdom of God and the joys of God into eternity. The same applies really today, doesn't it? The allegory, the kingdom of God, people are invited to the kingdom of God, to life beyond this life, life beyond death, and they prefer this life and death and at the end of it all. They reject the kingdom that Christ has offered them. They do not want to know. They go their own ways. Of course, in the case of the Israelite people, the Jewish people, they were to be punished because they persecuted and murdered the prophets and the, the, the pre preachers that God had sent to them. So their town was burnt and their temple destroyed. And this happened in the year AD 70 when the Romans came in and destroyed Jerusalem and levelled it to the ground. They were punished for their wickedness, even in this life. Now, will God punish the human race, even in this life, because of its total indifference? But God is all patience. The man, the second allegory, the second par uh, parable is about the man coming in without the garment. The garment is his unpreparedness. He's not prepared when he comes into the feast to enter into the kingdom of God. He's all sinful and all dirty and has not made an effort to change his ways and to put on the garment of cleansing and salvation. He's therefore thrown out into the darkness which represents hell. So therefore today, this parable is applicable as it was in the days of Jesus. The people are given the message, but they decide they don't want to hear. They don't want to know. They've got this to do or that to do, or every other materialistic consideration. They prefer to use their Sundays for everything but serving the kingdom of God. So that when they come to the end of this life, they have nothing to show for it. They have no wedding garment. They have nothing to give to God. So they are not acceptable, ultimately. Many are called, but few are chosen. It is because they have decided of their own, on their own account to ignore the call of God, to follow his ways, to look to him and his kingdom. And Jesus promises them, it's a symbol allegory of what the kingdom of God will be like, the wedding feast, that's a symbol an allegory of, of, of the kingdom of God and they're invited to this and yet they have to do this or that or every other consideration but they have no time for their souls, no time for their spiritual welfare, no time for prayer, no time for God only time for themselves well, ultimately they come and they come without the wedding garment and they cast into exterior darkness so therefore, it applies to us today as it does to the Jews of Jesus' time. Jesus was condemning his own people for the rejection of God who came to save them and sent their prophets to save them. Thus as they rejected them in God in their day, so in our society, society rejects God in our day. Well, we will have to wait and see for the, for the patience of God is eternal. He is willing to wait and abide his time. And in the meantime, he hopes so, that the call that he gives may be listened by some, because many are called, but few are chosen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, but not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never get, cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these Eucharist. This Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray you, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, the all your bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, The rich suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.